If you have your Bibles this morning, I would like to ask you to please turn to the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> I would like to read from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. There's one word that should stand out immediately in all of your minds when I say Hebrews chapter 11. What's that one word? Faith. faith. If you're going to study the subject of faith, Hebrews chapter 11 is one of the places that you would surely go tells us a lot about faith it defines faith it tells us that without faith it is impossible to please God it tells us a lot about people that walked by faith people that lived by faith people that honored God and people that pleased God because they lived by faith walked by faith they served God by faith uh, Paul says that uh, faith without works is dead. So as the word of God here talks a lot about faith, it always is talking about what people did by faith. It was by faith that Noah built an ark. It was by faith that Moses left Egypt. It was by faith everything, all the people that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11 it tells us what they did it always prefaces it by saying by faith this person did this that pleased God two words that are on my heart this morning are pleasing God pleasing God I want to read from Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 Hebrews 11 and verse 6 the word of God says but without faith it is impossible to please him, pronoun him is referring to God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is not dead. Some people went to see a movie this week. God is not dead. I've heard good reports about that movie. Did you know you can't prove to somebody who doesn't believe in God, you can't prove that God is not dead. You can't prove to an atheist that there is a God. And the reason is that without faith, you can't believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Now, if you've been born again, then you have faith. And if you have faith, you better exercise that faith. You need to believe that God is. God is. He is. He's alive. He's real. He's well. And He is judging us according to our works. So we, need, we must believe by faith. We must believe that He is. And we must believe that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Uh, notice again the wording in verse 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. How many of you think you like to please people? How many of you think you like to please people? I like to please people. I really do. If I do something I like for somebody to be pleased with whatever I've done. I want people to be pleased. I want my mama and my wife and my children and my grandchildren to be pleased with my, with my life. I want you as the congregation here at this church, I want you to be pleased with me as a pastor. And I want you to be pleased with me as your preacher. I want you to be pleased with me as your brother in Christ. I like to please people. I think that most born again children of God like to please other people. 
A danger we get into sometimes is that we concentrate on pleasing people and we don't think about pleasing God. And the fact is that the number one that we always ought to desire to please is to please God. Now, you cannot always please God and always please people because people's desires and intent and what they want is often different than what God says. So you will never, if you're a people pleaser, if that's a main goal in your life is to please people, then you're not going to always please God. So my number one desire and goal in life ought not to make to be to make just make you happy as your pastor and, and preacher and friend and brother, but my number one desire should be to please God. I think it is absolutely amazing that we have the privilege and have the ability to please God. Caleb, do you want to please your granddaddy? You do. You want him to be pleased with you, don't you? I want all of us to understand that we have the ability to please God. Now, I think that's just amazing. When you know how great God is and you know that you have the ability to please God, you know that it is God that has made us and not we ourselves. You know that it is God that has given us everything that we have that's good. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And all that we have and all that we're able to do that's right and good, it's all because of God that I ought to want to please God. In fact, the Word of God says that when you're out working, you're not to do it to please men, but you're to do all of your work as unto the Lord and not unto men. So if I am, if I am pleasing God on my job, and I've got a lot of different jobs. But if I'm pleasing God on my jobs, if I'm pleasing God, I'm also going to be pleasing the people I work for if I'm working for the right kind of people. Do you understand that? The best employees that I've ever had in my life when I was in business or when I was in education or whatever I've done, in all those different vocations that I've had, the best employees have been outstanding Christians. And they were not concentrating on pleasing me. They were concentrating on pleasing God. And as they pleased God and they did all that they did as unto the Lord and not unto men, they were pleasing a lot of people in all that they did. So we have the ability to please God and we have the ability to please men at the same time. Only people that will ever be pleased with your work as a Christian, the only people that you will ever please while you're pleasing God is Christians. Jesus pleased God, didn't he? On at least two occasions in the Bible. One is when he was being baptized. When he was baptized and he came up out of the water, the word of God says that God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son... In whom I am well pleased. On the Mount of Transfiguration, again, God spoke from heaven after they had tried to make three altars one for Peter, uh, one for James, and, and, and uh, no, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Jesus. That's what Peter, James, and John wanted to do. Uh, God spoke from heaven about Jesus being far superior to Moses and Elijah. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And then they all fell on their faces and they stopped worshiping Moses and Elijah. And they worshiped Jesus only. That's found in Matthew chapter 17. So, so the, the father of heaven above has said to his only begotten son, he has said, I'm well pleased with you. Let me encourage all of you daddies and, and you mothers, I want to encourage you to tell your children, when they do something that's right, when they do something that's good, let them know that you're pleased with what they're doing. If our Heavenly Father 
said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. If he told us that he's pleased with his son, don't you think that when your son is doing right, that you ought to tell that son and you ought to tell others, I am well pleased with my son. Now don't be going around lying when your son's living an ungodly life and act like you're pleased with that. If you're pleased with that, you're not pleasing God. The only time your children can please you is when they're also pleasing God. The Bible in Hebrews chapter 11 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 tells us that all men have not faith. Now you follow this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Bible says all men have not faith. Now if you can't please God unless you have faith, all men do not have the ability to please God. But if you have faith, You've been born of the Spirit of God. You have the ability to please God. Now if God's given you faith and given you the ability to please Him and you don't please Him, He's going to hold you accountable for not pleasing Him. If you're a Father, if you're Lord, if you're Savior, if Jesus Christ, if our King, if He cannot say, if He does not say to you from time to time, well done, thou good. Is that pleasing words? In Matthew 24, whenever, or Matthew 25, when that Lord said to his servants who had been given five talents and they produced five more talents, was the Lord pleased with that servant? He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I have people that work for me sometime and, and I like to be able to say, you did a good job. Well done. Do you like to hear that when you're working for somebody? Do you like to hear somebody say, you did a good job? And you like for them to show you that by paying you more money too, don't you? Well, listen, brethren, our Heavenly Father, He opens up the windows of heaven and He says to His children when they're serving Him, He says, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful watch the word now faithful servant well done thou good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of thy Lord the Lord was pleased with him Jesus in that same chapter says that God our king is going to say he's going to say hear the word now hear the words come ye blessed of my father Inherit the kingdom. Was the father pleased? Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom. Prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. Had they been living by faith? Their works. That whole passage is full of works that they had done. And it was by faith that they did those works. And because they exercised their faith and did those works, the Father was pleased and he said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he said, Come, inherit the kingdom. Because I was in hunger and you gave me meat. And they said, When did we ever do anything for you, Lord? And he said, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. You can please God. You can please God by pleasing people. But if your focus is on pleasing people, sometimes you're going to get away from pleasing God. My first and foremost desire should be, God, help me to please you. Did you know if I please God, my wife's going to be pleased? Because my God has said, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. So if I please God by loving my wife the way Christ loves the church, my wife's going to be pleased too. Back up in your Bible. Well, go forward. No, nope, no, stay here a minute. <laughs> I, I've got, I'm going about 100 miles an hour in my mind and my tongue's just not going real fast right now. Look at Hebrews 11.5. Hebrews 11.5 
The word of God says, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. <laughs> now, he didn't even die. God did something with him that he, as far as I know, is only done to one other person. He just took him on to glory. He did that with Elijah. He just took him up in a whirlwind. Didn't even die. And the, and the scripture says here that God translated Enoch. Why did he do that? He had this testimony that he what? That he pleased God. Now, I wonder where he got that testimony from. A testimony is when somebody tells you something. And the scripture says here that, that Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. Who do you think told him he pleased God? I don't think it was his preacher. I don't think it was anybody other than God himself who said, I'm well pleased with your life. Now he did not say, you don't find anywhere else in the Bible, that he ever said to anyone what he said to Jesus. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am what? Well pleased. Brethren, Jesus is far superior to any of us. We have the privilege to please the Lord. May God help us to please him. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13. Look at verses 15 and 16. Just turn your Bibles one page. In Hebrews chapter 13. Listen please to verses 15 and 16. The word of God says in Hebrews 13 verse 15. By him therefore... Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Let us offer the sacrifice of praise. You know what we were doing when we were singing a while ago? We were offering the sacrifice of, if you were singing in the Spirit, and if you were singing with understanding, you were offering the sacrifice of praise with your mouth. You were praising the Lord. Praise pleases God. God's pleased with praise. Isn't it wonderful to be able to come together with our brothers and sisters? I love to just, I like to stop and listen to you sing, but then I can't stay stopped very long. I like to join right back in. But I love to hear you singing. It's a privilege to hear the people of God making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Pleasing God. Coming together and singing songs of praise. So he says in verse 15. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. You can give praise to God by singing. You can give praise to God by giving thanks to God. And then verse 16 says, but he's going to talk about more now. Don't just sing. And don't just say thank you to God. Verse 16 says, but to do good and to communicate, that's to help other people, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Do you hear the wording there? God is well pleased when you offer the sacrifice of praise through singing and through giving thanks. And then to do good and communicate to help other people. Don't forget. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. I didn't say you couldn't please God well, but I'm telling you, you don't find anywhere in the Bible that God ever said to an individual he ever said, other than Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. But you can please God. God is well pleased. With what he's just described here in Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. Do you want to please God? Do you want God to be well pleased with your life? Did you know that every day of your life you can, that God can be well pleased with every day? Every night when you close your, every morning when you get up in the morning, you need to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sparing me and my family through another night. Thank you for the rest. Even if you only had... Even if you only had just a few minutes rest, you thank the Lord for the rest you had. Even if you didn't sleep all night long, you thank the Lord that you were able to lay down for a little while. 
And then begin that day by, Lord, help me to please you today. I want to please you. Is there a song? Uh, somebody ought to write a song. I want to please you, Lord. I want to please you. I want to please you. Go back in your Bibles to Colossians. Back up about 10 or 12 pages to Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Beautiful expression here. In Colossians chapter 3. I'm talking about different ways you can please the Lord now. Different ways. That in Hebrews chapter 11 says it's by faith that we are able to please God. When we walk by faith and live by faith, that pleases God. We're going to enumerate at least four or five ways that you can please God. Because used to, when I was a young man, I always said to preachers, I said, I know you keep telling us to do good works, but I need something specific. I want you to tell me exactly what to do. Because I just stay confused. And so, I always like to be sure you know exactly what you can do to please God. Walk by faith, live by faith, do what those people did in Hebrews 11. They pleased God. By faith, they pleased God. You can please God by faith. Walking by faith and living by faith. Second thing was in Hebrews 13, 15, and 16 where the word of God says is offer the sacrifice of praise with our lips. Uh, give thanks to God. Do good to others. Uh, communicate to them. Because with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So there's something else for you to do right there in Hebrews 13, 15, and 16. And then you come to Colossians chapter 3. Brother Walker, you want to please your daddy? Yes. Brother Richard, does he ever please you? Sure. Do you ever tell him? Brother Walker, does he ever tell you he pleases you? Yes. Yeah, he sure does. Brother Michael, does your daddy ever tell you he pleases you? That, that you're pleasing him, I mean? Yes, sure he does. Isn't that a blessing? It's a blessing to have daddies and granddaddies and mamas and grandmothers. It's a blessing to have brothers and sisters in Christ that please the Lord by helping us. Hebrew, uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, listen to verse 20. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20, the word of God says, Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is, well there's the wording again, this is well pleasing unto the Lord. What's well pleasing? What is described in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20? What does God say here is well pleasing unto the Lord? It's children, the wording says, children obey your parents. Let me tell all of you children something, all of you parents something. Your children should not have to know why they do everything that you tell them to do. I think you do a major disservice when you think you've got to explain why all the time. You need to just, they need to understand, just do what I tell you to do. No talking back, no waiting around, no negligence, just do what I tell you to do. You might not like that. But listen, brethren, our Heavenly Father does not always tell us why we have to do what we've got to do. But we better learn. And the, uh, the, uh, the best way, the best way for your children to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord is for you as a parent to teach them, I don't have to tell you, I am the parent, you're a child, and you do what I tell you to do. And you do it without talking back, and you do it immediately. That's the way you please God. Children, obey your parents. This, isn't it wonderful that even little children can please, can please God? Little children can please God. Isn't it wonderful that we have the privilege to please God? Isn't it sad that we have the ability to please God and we don't please Him more than we do. Every day our lives need to be filled with pleasing God. And if my life is filled with pleasing God, I'm going to be a Christian that my Heavenly Father is going to say, well done, 
I'm going to know he's pleased. You'll know when God is pleased. God's never spoken to me from heaven, but I'm telling you, I have felt in my heart. I have, from time to time in my life, I have felt my father say, well done. I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased. You did what was right right there. Isn't that a blessing? To have a father that he knows when you need to be commended. He knows. I tell you, too much, too much praise. People get depending on it and want to do it for the praise rather than just to please the father. But the father gives you the exact amount of praise you need. He'll tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear it. He'll say, well done. Other times he'll say, depart from me. Ye cursed. Because you didn't do what I told you to do. You didn't please me. There are serious consequences that come when we don't please God. There are great blessings that come when we do please God. Children, you better obey your parents. Children, if you do obey your parents, this is well pleasing to the Lord. Back up in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> Did you know that preaching is foolishness to a lot of people? I remember one time in my life, and it was after I was grown, that I got away from God a uh, considerable amount. And I remember one time sitting in church thinking, you know, this is crazy. And God took me to the woodshed for the, for the attitude I had. I got worn out. And I thought I was going to lose my mind. But David, you and I have both been there. Well, we thought, this is it. We're going crazy. We've lost it. God, God will not let me. Amen. <laughs> he will not let me disobey him without experiencing his chastening hand. Amen. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. But there was a time in my life that preaching was foolishness to me. I'd already been born again. There'd been a time in my life that preaching was wonderful. There'd been a time in my life when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old that I would sit in church and just cry and weep. I was a happy, I didn't cry all the time, but sometimes I cried with joy. I was happy. I was serving the Lord. I was close to God. 17 years old, I was just about as close to God as I think I could get. 18 years old, I felt wonderful, just so close to God. And then I began to get a little farther and farther away from God. And when I got away from God... I stopped feeling what I used to feel. I stopped rejoicing in the things I used to rejoice in. I was dead to the things of God. And preaching was foolishness to me. I was still in church. By the way, I was at that time still teaching Bible study in church. But I was so far away from God, there was nothing spiritual about me. That's a horrible condition to get in. And there's something that happens right after that that you never want to think about again as long as you live. Because it is pure hell on earth. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Listen please to verse 21. The word of God says, For after that, in the wisdom of God... The world by wisdom knew not God. That is by their own worldly wisdom. They did not know God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, preaching pleases God. It pleased God. Watch the wording there now. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Now, who is it that thinks preaching is foolishness? The world. The world. And so God is saying, you think it's foolishness? Well, there are some people that when they hear the preaching, their hearts are touched by the word of God, and they believe, I better do what God said. There are some of you in this congregation this morning, you may not feel a thing in the world. It may be foolishness to you. It's pleasing to God. Preaching is pleasing to God. And to those that believe God, preaching is beautiful to them. 
Our souls are fed by the preaching of the word of God. I'm given instruction. I'm given direction. I learn about God and how great he is and how loving he is and how merciful he is and how gracious he is. I learn about God through preaching and studying and reading God's word. But I've learned a lot from preaching in my lifetime. And when I believe what I hear preached, it saves me from a lot of trouble here in this world. And if I believe what I hear preached, I'm going to change my ways. And when I change my ways, I'm saved by what the world thinks is foolishness. And that is called preaching. It pleases God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I hope that God will help all of us this morning to rejoice. I have the privilege to please God. I want to please you. I want to please you. But pleasing you is nothing compared to the joy of knowing I pleased my Father in heaven. I've got a wonderful Father. You have a wonderful Father. Please Him every day of your life is my prayer for Christ's sake.